Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our November 8th edition of Wall Street Winners. First of all, sorry, there was no there was no Wall Street Winners last week due to illness, but I'm back in action. I'm taking names and I'm not taking any prisoners at all. Everything worked out pretty well while I was gone. Let's dive right into it. As we told you, we showed you the seasonality, we showed you the bullishness, and you can see the market took off. So you should be making really good money right now. But there's other more important things that happened as well while I was gone. Dow Jones, look at this, takes off, breaks to new all-time highs, etc. The seasonality is here. What can I say? But let's take a look at this red box up here. The little green line shows buying pressure. Now that buying pressure is, hmm, hmm. When it gets up at this level, it has a hard time sustaining that amount of buying pressure. What about the selling pressure? That's the little red line. Hmm. Got a bit of selling pressure here. Got some over here. But once again, we're getting towards the extremes where people, for example, the longs start to take profits and, and things like that. So right now, we're going to see probably a setback here for a couple of days to release this overbought situation where there's just too much buying. Now, don't sell anything. Don't sell anything by any means. It's still a bull market, don't you know? So here's the NASDAQ explodes to the upside purple predictor bullish everything is bullish seasonality we got our breakout explodes to the upside now why this is important because now we have a confirmed seasonal signal in the middle of our seasonally bullish time period. Now's the time to add 50 to 100% to your positions. In other words, if you normally would buy 100 shares of stock, buy 150 or 200. This is the time when we really start to make a lot of money. Now is the time when we want to start being aggressive. No being a weenie. You got it? Time to be bold. Now, uh, you can see here we are here, as we told you before, we were going to see this strong up move. We're still going to see that strong up move. There's still more to go. Then you can see when we're using the purple line here, we're going to probably go sideways and then another pop at the end of the year. But right now, time to press the gas pedal all the way to the floor. Asset allocation, money's coming out of the bond market and supporting this stock market. Stock market risk decator explodes to the upside, saying that the market is seeking out risk. They don't want boring bonds. They don't want boring consumer staples. They want that risky NASDAQ kind of stock. And that's bullish for the stock market. Global shares, though, interesting, have yet to make a new all-time high. So they're lagging. Don't really want to be over there right now. Another interesting development is that the yield curve is starting to flatten a little bit. This is interesting. The last couple of weeks, uh, we're seeing that the, the, the stock, the, the yield curve come down. Huh. Now, fully paid up members, we'll talk about this in more detail, but that's not good for the stock market. It's not bad yet, really. It's just a thing. Uh, bonds, though, move briskly up here. We had that gap up. Then we had a gap up here as well at the end of last week. So if I look at this technically, I have to say bonds are going higher, but I find that hard to believe. The only reason why bonds would go higher is if the economy is weakening. And yet you saw that non-farm payroll number on Friday. It was much stronger than the market expected. Bond key factors. Here's the bonds up here. They hooked down a little bit. Gold is going up. The other two indicators, they also came down. So net-net, our three indicators are saying lower yields, higher bonds. Now, all that occurred in the last week. Dollar also did strongly, but then weakened at the end of the day. So it's kind of still here. But I'm still looking for the dollar to move higher overall against most currencies because the, the Fed has the tightest monetary policy in the world. Well, maybe not. There's some small countries, but of the big ones, it has the, the, the tightest monetary policy. And tight monetary policy usually leads to strong currency. So look for the dollar to continue to move higher. But gold breaks out. 
<laughs> so we're starting to see some activity in gold and our indicators are a mixed bag, kind of all kind of neutrally, but fully paid up members, hang on, I have more to say about gold later. Crude oil came under some pressure and then rallied strongly on the non-farm payroll number that occurred on Friday where uh, employment gains were much stronger than expected, much stronger, like over double what was expected. Bitcoin, as you know, we've been long since the breakout over here, consolidating the purple predictor. Look over here, creeping higher, getting to new all-time highs. If the purple predictor is going to all-time highs, I'm pretty sure Bitcoin is too. So we want to remain on the long side of Bitcoin. All right, freebies, love having you here. Listen, we've been crushing this market. So freebies, probably it's now it's time to spring for a couple of bucks and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? I've made you a lot of money. Pony up a little, okay? Come on.